Hello and welcome to News Click. We are talking today about the story in Karnataka with the iron ore mining, the Loka Yukta report, and finally the exit of the Reddy brothers from the ministry in Karnataka. To discuss these, we have with us today Paranjay Guha Thakurta, independent journalist and maker of a documentary film on this story called Blood and Iron. Welcome to News Click, Paranjay. Thank you, Raghu. Uh, let me start by asking you what you think is the uh, outcome now of the exit of the uh, Reddy brothers and what do you see happening in Karnataka over the next uh, few weeks or months? That's a difficult question to answer, but I think what is most significant is that following the submission of the final report of the former Lok Ayukta Justice Santosh Hegde, uh, the fact that B.S. Yadurappa had to put in his papers, most reluctantly. He quit his job literally kicking and screaming. Sure. This in itself is very, very significant. And the fact is, he was, after all, the first chief minister of a state in southern India who belonged to the Bharatiya Janata Party. That he had to quit his job just a little over three years into his five-year term is very, very significant. Also significant is the fact that his successor has chosen not to include two of the Reddy brothers and their close associate B. Sri Ramulu in his cabinet of ministers, in, in his cabinet is also very, very significant. I think what is noteworthy about Justice Santosh Hegde's voluminous report is that he is meticulously documented the manner in which the chief minister's own family members, his sons, trusts and companies controlled by them were the recipients of large amounts of money, about 30 crore rupees, sure. 20 crore to one so-called educational trust and 10 crores in a land deal. And, and these involved some of the companies against whom there were serious allegations of illegal mining and, and the fact that this nexus between criminals, politicians and businessmen has, was established in the report. I, I think these are some of the most significant aspects of the report. And in passing, I may also add what uh, Justice Hegde's report also nails is the lie that was propagated by Gali Janardhan Reddy, the former Union Minister for Tourism, Infrastructure Development and uh, Youth Affairs in the Karnataka government, that he and his family members had really nothing to do with illegal mining in Karnataka. And all their interests were in the neighboring state of Andhra Pradesh. Yeah. Not only has he sought to nail that claim, he's also documented how money went from one company to the other company through Singapore two international tax havens and how this was part of a, a money laundering racket. And in light of this detailed documentation contained in the Ombudsman's report, uh, are we likely now to see an unfolding of the next chapter, which will be filing of charges, prosecution? Justice Santosh Hegde's successor, Justice Shivraj pa Patil, has already initiated the process and one can hope that the entire process from the first, the filing of a first information report to the carrying out of an independent investigation which would, should be followed by uh, prosecution proceedings, I hope, I hope, I'm not sure, but I hope all these will proceed in the coming years. You know, for some months now, there was this face-off between the, the governor of Karnataka, Hans Raj Bhardwaj, and Mr. Yedu Rappa. And, and at that point of time, the BJP was alleging that Hans Raj Bhardwaj was acting more as a quote-unquote Congress agent rather than a constitutional functionary as a governor. But now that Mr. Yedu Rappa is just one more member of the Legislative Assembly, the permission of the governor need not be obtained to commence prosecution proceedings against him. I hope this happens in the near future. I'd like to uh, take a step backwards at the bigger picture involved. Uh, I, clearly, this is not a matter confined to the state of Karnataka alone. Even if we look at the story of the Reddy brothers and their mining operations in Bellari, Bellari, as we all know, is a region divided between Karnataka and Andhra. 
and their mining operations also were divided between Karnataka and Andhra. And there's at least as much of the iceberg uh, on the other side of the border in Andhra as there is in Karnataka. And that's a story which I believe is yet to unfold. Yes, sir, you're absolutely correct. You know, for some years now, what has been going on in not just Billari, but its adjoining district, which is the district of Anandapur, in Andhra Pradesh was known. In fact, Justice Hegde's first report had documented how the miners had virtually obliterated the provincial borders, the markers which demarcated the borders between Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. In their greed, to mine and encroach on the leases of others. So what was interesting are two or three things. What has been going on there has been meticulously documented. It's the Union Ministry of Mines, it's the regulator, the Indian Bureau of Mines, which has said that over 90% of the mining operations in that part of the country were illegal. They were violating some law or the other. Encroachment, or you know, you know, extracting more than the, what they were authorized to do, and so on and so forth. But wait, I think it goes beyond that. Bellari is incidentally a, a Telugu-dominated. Uh, it, it, the Telugu-speaking population of Bellari is substantial, and and the Gali Reddy brothers had a very very close business association with the former chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, Y.S. Rajshekar Reddy, as well as his son, Y.S. Jaganmohan Reddy, the member of parliament from Kadapa Lok, 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 Lok Sabha constituency, who, if you go by his declared assets, is the wealthiest member of parliament at present. So when the Gali Reddy brothers set up the Obalapura Mining Company and Brahmani Steels and other companies, th th there are photographs galore of showing them uh, sure. with, with YSR. Uh, so, so, so the short point is that the loot, the, the illegal mining and the illegal exports of iron ore from this part of the country, uh, which often is euphemistically described as the new republic of Bellari, has covertly contributed to the coffers of the two largest political parties in the country, the Bharati Janta Party and the Indian National Congress. It also shows uh, the picture of the involvement of the ruling sections in India, whichever political party they belong to, in the new dispensation with extractive industries, be they mining or oil or gas or whatever, seems to be the quickest way to make money and where the nexus between politicians, the bureaucrats and business seem to come out. You know, let me answer your question in more than one way. You talked about the quickest way to make money. This has been documented. The Gali Reddy brothers were the sons of a police constable from Kaul Bazar in Bellari. Yediyurappa started his career as a clerk in the, in, the, in the government department and then went on to become a clerk of a rice mill owner whose daughter he married and set up a hardware store. Thereafter, these two individuals, the kind of wealth they accumulated is truly mind-boggling. How did they accumulate this wealth is an obvious question that everybody is asking. These, these are surely a wealth that is way, way disproportionate to their known sources of income. But when you look at a bigger picture, at one point of time, not only were the mining activities closely controlled by the government, the government was itself doing all the mining. Right. But as over the last 20 years, as more and more of these mining leases were given to private mine owners, and this, in, during this entire period of so-called economic liberalization, what we see is the other face of it, the ugly face of it, the absence of regulation resulting in these forms of crony capitalism. You know, Justice Hegde's report clearly points out how Bellari became like the fiefdom of these individuals. Not only were they state ministers in charge, they ensure that no honest officer, whether that officer be in the forest department, or in the police department, or in the administrative service, could could exist there for any 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 period of time, un unless they sort of bent over backwards to to go along with the Reddy brothers. And and you know, once upon a time, it was really Bellari used to be a bastion of the Congress. This was from where Sonia Gandhi was elected, right. and this was from where Sushma Swaraj 
contested again Sonia Gandhi. That was the first time the Belly, uh, but the Bellari brothers, the Gali Reddy brothers, came into contact with her. But today, of course, all their mentors have deserted them, including Mrs. Sushma Swaraj, who happens to be the leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha. Now, under the present neoliberal dispensation, the argument was that neoliberalism, liberalization, would bring to an end the license permit Raj, a collusion between bureaucracy and politicians on the one hand and business people on the other. But we see that collusion continuing even under liberalism, albeit in different uh, forms. In fact, what you see uh, is a situation which is far worse than the situation that prevailed in the license control Raj days. Yes, things were not exactly great those days, but what we see is a kind of blatant violation of all the laws of the land, uh, the, a c complete brazenness in manipulating the law. I mean, for instance, Justice Hegde's report talked about 500,000 tons of iron ore which was seized and suddenly it disappears. Right. We're talking about huge amounts of iron ore being exported out of the country, much of it to China, with no rules being followed, Absolutely. whether it be the manner in which trucks were overloaded and the manner in which the, the customs duty norms and the port rules were violated. And this is not the only cost. The cost has been huge to the ordinary people of that area. Their environment has been ravaged. Their livelihoods have been destroyed. Their water has been polluted. Their air has been polluted. And, and if, if you really go to that part of the country, you'll realize that it is really, it, it appears as if it's some other planet. <laughs> you know, this what, what was once verdant green forests look literally like craters from some other part of the, some other planet. Extractive industries seem to be the cutting edge of the neoliberal uh, set of policies, as well as the cutting edge of environmental destruction, both in terms of human ecology, as well as in terms of the natural uh, environment. I just like to end with a last point, which is we've seen the scams unfolding on the big uh, giving away of natural resources, oil, gas, spectrum. Uh, the mining sector seems to be ripe for the smaller players to emerge as bigger players in due course of time. You see state after state in coal, in iron, in marble, in quarrying, how this kind of thing is being done. Is this the last frontier now? You know, Raghu, in a sense, in certain respects, things are even worse than you make it out to be. What has happened is that the natural, the most valuable natural resources that lie under Mother Earth, in this country at least, also happen to be those areas where above Mother Earth, some of the most biodiverse parts of the country and these are also those parts of the country where some of the poorest of the poor especially the indigenous communities the tribal people they, they reside now what has happened is this this kind of last frontier what economists sometimes describe as the resource curse the presence of resources instead of being a blessing for the local communities end up becoming a curse on them and and what has happened is that the government which is supposed to act as a custodian of resources that belong to the people of this country. They start playing favorites. They, they don't allocate these resources in a fair and a transparent manner. And therefore, you see the worst forms of crony capitalism. And in the I mean, this is, in certain senses, even worse than feudalism or colonial rule, the, 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 the kind of thing you saw. Because you have resources here, say in Bilari, non-renewable resources, which have gone for good. In certain respects, it's worse than the 2G scam. In the case of the 2G scam, the losses are huge, but they are notional. Money which the government could have got, but did not get. In this case, those resources will never come back to this country. Those iron ore reserves that existed in this country, they are now steel rods and steel bars and parts of buildings and, and, and stadia in, in, in Beijing or some other part of China. Sure. So, so in that sense, those resources have gone forever. Thank you, Paranjoy. I'm sure we could have continued the discussion on many other linked issues, but thanks again. Thank you very much, Raghu, for asking me to be here.